Greetings everyone, Point99 here, and welcome to my first video, of which, as already outlined, uh, the purpose is to demonstrate the use of a common DC voltage meter in determining the net average voltage of a high frequency waveform. And before we get into the measurements, I just wanted to show you the five different meters I'm going to be using today from left to right. Um, we have the Mastercraft. Now this is the cheapest meter I've got. It's probably about a $20 meter. Next we have the Micronta, which is a Radio Shack meter. As some of you TPU fans out there may actually recognize this as a meter that was used by Stephen Mark in some of his videos. Next we have a Fluke 73 Series 2. Uh, it's a pretty good meter. It's a little bit older, but it's a good meter. Um, right here we've got another Micronta Radio Shack meter. Uh, it's one of the better meters. It's actually a true RMS meter. Picked it up a number of years ago. And last of all is the Fluke 179 true RMS meter. For this test today, I wanted to show you a quick overview of the test equipment I was going to be using. And to start off with, um, we've got the Hewlett Packard pulse generator here. It's an 8160A programmable pulse generator. And the reason I'm using it is because it allows me to precisely adjust the pulse width, uh, which is what I'm going to be sending into the meter and the scope today. Uh, and this is uh, precisely what I need in order to demonstrate the, the effect and uh, the effectivity of, of the meter measurement in comparison to the oscilloscope. Now what I've done here is uh, I've installed a T on the output of the pulse generator. Uh, one half of the T goes through a coax to the input of the scope and the other half of the T uh, I made a special cable just for this test. Uh, so we've got another coax here that runs directly into the meter input. The oscilloscope is a Tektronix TDS-784A, which is a one gigahertz uh, bandwidth oscilloscope with uh, four giga samples per second uh, capability. So I think it's a pretty decent scope uh, to do this test. This is a brief segment here just to show you what the pulse generator is capable of and how I'm going to be adjusting it for this test. Now the pulse generator is currently set at a little over 1 megahertz frequency and all I'm going to be doing is varying the pulse width. Now currently you can see the pulse generator set on 500 nanoseconds and that's giving us uh, roughly 50% duty cycle square wave on the oscilloscope. So I'll just uh, go through a range here of settings for you and keep your eye on both and you'll see I'm incrementing in 10 nanosecond increments. But you can see you can go right from a very short on time to a very long on time. I can actually vary this in one nanosecond increments. So just watch the pulse trainer there, you can see it going down in one nanosecond increments. So that's what I'm going to be doing today to finely tune, to try and get around the zero mark, and also just to go through a range of values and see how the scope compares to the meters. Before we get into the measurements, I just wanted to show you how channel 1 was set up. As you can see, it's in DC coupling. And uh, the input impedance is set to 50 ohms. Uh, the generator is putting out plus and minus 100 millivolts. Uh, so you can see the oscilloscope is set on 50 millivolts per division, giving us two divisions plus and minus and the time base is set to 200 nanoseconds per division. Now I've got it 
I currently have it set to as close to zero volts as I can in terms of the cycle mean, which you can see there. You'll also see uh, the above that, the frequency is just a little over one megahertz input. So the cycle mean is fluctuating right now between 100 and 400 microvolts. It's pretty close to zero, not too critical. Uh, biggest thing we're doing right now, what we want to do is compare the meter to the oscilloscope. Now the oscilloscope has been running for about 40 minutes, so it's well warmed up. And I did run a SPC calibration just prior to starting up this segment of the video. So it should be in calibration. So currently, as I said, uh, you see that the, well, before I go on, let me just show you where the zero is. Just so you have an idea that it is pretty much right at zero there. And our plus and minus two divisions. So again, uh, pretty close to zero volt mean, which means uh, we're just about right bang on 50% duty cycle and we're getting a net average of close to zero. Currently it's sitting at about 200, 300 microvolts and I have currently the Mastercraft voltmeter connected. So they're, they're both connected in parallel and I'll just move it over here and show you what it's reading. Sorry, I have to obscure the oscilloscope display a bit. That's about the only way to get uh, both in at the same time. So I would say they're correlating pretty good uh, uh, right now. Um, the meter is set on the 200 millivolts per division scale. And they're correlating pretty good. So let me change the pulse width just randomly let it settle for a second and the oscilloscope I hope you can see that is reading about minus 47.2 millivolts and the meter is reading minus 47 millivolts let's go in the positive direction somewhere just randomly 61.962 on the scope and 62 on the meter 62.1 so they're they're within 100 microvolts of each other right now that's pretty darn good for a 20 dollar meter i would say Okay, I've changed meters to the Micronta, the cheaper Micronta, uh, but I haven't changed any other settings on the pulse generator. Um, the scope is still reading 62.3, 62.4 millivolts, and the Micronta, as you can see, is 62.2, 62.3. So it's uh, right bang on with the uh, Mastercraft meter. Let's take it over to the negative side, somewhere just randomly. And so currently the scope is about minus 18, minus 17.9, and the meter is minus 17.8. So it's about uh, 100 to 200 microvolt difference there. 